told that I'm too small, I'm not big enough, I'm not fast enough, I don't have what it takes. I prepare so no one can take what is mine. No one can replace my mind, my heart. To be the best and stay there, sweat is necessary. I'm older, of course I'm older. That's the beauty of it. 16 years plus, different level of wisdom, different level of understanding, different level of punishment. I want to live long after my records have fallen, long after my rings have tarnished. And whatever you got to do to make sure you chase your legacy every second of your life, will you be remembered? How would you be remembered? Why wouldn't you fight for the greatest achievement ever? Leave your mark to endure forever. What's crack again, YouTube? Your good friend, Das Murray, coming at you live-ish. <laughs> Ray Ray, man. Intensity personified or what? What do you say, man? And for Ravens fans out there, this is nothing new for them. What's going on, folks? We're uh, post-mortem here, as uh, as one would say, for E3 2012. Give you a little background, give you a little uh, perspective, as your good friend Dasberg tries to. Is uh, E3 is the annual Electronic uh, Entertainment Expo, E3. And it's held annually at the Los Angeles... Uh, at least for now, there is talk it might be moving, though. But it's held annually at the Los Angeles Convention Center. And really what it is, uh, is, and it, you know, since the advent of next generation consoles, your Xbox 360 and PS PS3 and uh, non-Mindo, it, it is a largely a console show now. So... And, you know, your good friend Dasmerg's back into doing the PC gaming thing. I still got both my consoles, though. You know, I got my... Well, actually, I've got three of them, because I've got my PS... You know, I got my PS3, I've got my 360, and I still got my PS2. In fact, I got the new new cool slim one for a couple old titles that uh, never made the transition or won't play on my new PS3. But I'm getting kind of lost here, because what we're talking about here is post-mortem E3, and really the big splash of this year's uh, E3 was... Madden 13. Definitely one of the big splash games this year. Made a lot of noise. Uh, it's making a lot of noise on YouTube amongst the sports com you know, my fellow sports commentators out there who do a much better than your good friend Das Because again, this is part time and I just share my passion with you folks out there. And really just want to go over straight from the horse's mouth. That's the purpose of this video. Madden 13, what do we know right now? This is all going to be clips taken directly from the developers. I like to get my information from the source, as they say. And you know what I mean? Not the uh, you know not third hand. You know I'm not gonna be reading off some forum post from some obscure forum from some guy who heard from another guy who was at the show. No, I'm gonna show you clips taken directly from this this year's E3. Uh, we're gonna start off with the actual you know a couple of do, uh, tidbits there from the actual presentation. We'll get into some of the other game mode stuff that they put out. Uh, this is all lovingly boiled from. EA's uh, EA Sports's YouTube channel, so you go over verify it there, and really it also a little informational video for you know folks who don't want to be sitting through like you know because there's a ton of videos now, especially and especially you're gonna start to see a bunch of gameplay from the game floor uh, videos start to roll out too. So the, it's not so much focused uh, this chat that we're gonna have here, this video I put together for you, not so focused so much on the actual gameplay, but it's really a what we know and what we've been told. And a little bit of diagnosis, and as always, your good friend Dasmer, we're gonna have a little bit of fun. So, let's get into it here. We're gonna kick off with uh, what hap what transpired right after that. That was, uh, that was, as I said, that was the, you know, sizzle trailer leading into their actual presentation where Cam comes out on stage and actually talks uh, Madden 13. Well, you know, uh, he they were the lead speakers for uh, the EA Sports presentation, and, yeah, you're going to see why. So it's all good stuff. Stick around, and here we go. Madden NFL 13 will leave its mark with two of the biggest game changers in the history of the franchise. Let's start with gameplay. Madden delivers physics you can feel, powered by the all-new Infinity Engine. Every impact is more intense. Every battle is more realistic. The Infinity Engine technology delivers runtime physics, and the result 
is the most authentic gameplay we've ever created. And here's why. First, it delivers a countless number of animation possibilities. No two plays will ever look or feel the same. Second, interactions between players are more organic. If a player's arm is knocked while running, it may affect balance. If his leg is hit, he may trip. The Infinity Engine considers a player's mass, his speed, and his momentum. And this affects the outcome of every collision. Third, a player's physical attributes matter more than ever. Smaller players won't easily drive through larger players. Little guys will have to use their speed and agility to keep larger defenders off balance and avoid a square hit. And finally, predetermined outcomes, they're history. In the past, the start of a tackle animation would tell me that my control over the play had ended. But now, with the Infinity Engine, I can regain my balance after contact and fight for a few more yards. It's simple. The Infinity Engine completely changes the outcome of every single play. And that's why they get the keynote address, folks. That's, uh, that's a pretty hot load of awesome that uh, Cam just dropped on us there. You know what else he could have just come out and done? Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> now powered by Infinity, that's what they're calling it, or a runtime physics-based game, game engine, which means countless animation possibilities now, which also means no two plays will look or feel the same. These are quotes right from Cam, folks. Organic interactions between players instead of predetermined animation sequences. Player physical attributes will, quote, matter more than ever, because remember, we're now in a runtime physics environment. Folks, these are the things that we've been asking for. Uh, we, and I, I speak gen uh, generically and generally, saying, uh, you know, the Madden game players and, and EA, EA's brand of football have been asking for since the end of the PS2 and original Xbox days since this game moved on to 360. And it's finally happening. Lord, it's finally happening! <laughs> and you know what? This is the things like Apex and Smitty and you know the, the sim standard I've been talking about bringing into this game. And you know This is one of the reasons why I started a, a YouTube channel in the first place. But what's, uh, let's hear more about this directly from developers, folks. Infinity End. What's up, AJ back here at E3 2012. I'm sitting here with gameplay designer of Madden NFL 13, Victor Lugo. But more specifically, you are the gameplay designer for the Infinity Engine. Tell us just right. quickly what the Infinity Engine is. Uh, well, essentially the Infinity Engine is a new uh, physics engine that we've layered on top of all of our animations to give us lots and lots of variety in everything we do. And it's going to completely change the way we play the game. Just for those who played FIFA last year, is it kind of similar to what they did? I'd say it's similar, um, but it has definitely been created in tune uh, specifically for this contact sport, uh, which is football. All right, so we're going to jump into a play here. You've already got it queued up. This is in practice mode. Sure. Tell us about balance. Okay. And how this fits into the new engine. Sure. Essentially what happens is, um, in the past I would have been able to just crash through the line or crash through my guys and not stumble, not fall, but now because we have a balance and stumble system, um, I have to be very, very careful of where I run um, and exactly how I hit the hole, basically. So what's going to happen here is I should have cut a little earlier or possibly hurdled this guy, but because I didn't, now you're going to see my guy stumble and fall to the ground. So Tripped over your own guy this time. Right. In the past, I could have I just kind of pushed him to the side. You know, we weren't doing things as realistically as possible, but now you'll see uh, that my legs get caught up. Um, he's going to stumble a bit try to keep his balance and he's gonna fall. Um, you gotta admit, man, that hole was pretty big. You probably didn't have to run over your guy. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know what I was thinking, but... Um, you, you wanted know. to give us an example here. Exactly, exactly. I'd <laughs> never ever do that for real. That, that would never ever happen, but um, you know, this is, this is what we're looking at. So every time you run the ball, you will have feedback on why you fell. Um, you're gonna see the, the ankle get caught, you're gonna see the guy stumble, and uh, in this case I fell, but um, if you do the right thing, that won't happen. Okay, so that's pretty cool, uh, the whole balance thing, but to, what is balance without a little bit of a recovery chance as well? You don't always exactly. fall to the ground when you get tripped up. Exactly, and that's to me is the most significant piece. You now have to play this game to the whistle every time. There's no such thing as, oh, I've been uh, sucked into this two-man tackle, now I'm gonna fall. You can recover, your guy can recover, and it is based on how much balance your guy has. So in this case, Mr. Turner has good balance. Um, notice that uh, a guy got between Mike and the defender here, mm -hmm. and because of that, now the tackle is not as intense as it would have been, and because of that, he now has the ability 
to, to break the tackle. In this case, I'm just gonna break the tackle by doing a spin, but notice that I stumble the appropriate way. I don't spin off and keep running at full speed. I now stumble right. because I'm slightly off balance um, until the point where I struggle and eventually fall. And you but lose some of that momentum as well. Absolutely. You, you're not going as fast, so that next guy has a lot more time to get over to you. That's exactly right. It's, it's gonna be very, very uh, interesting to see how people handle uh, these one-on-one -on -one, uh, scenarios and, and breaking tackles and fighting for every last yard, so um, I'm excited to see that. All right, so it looks very good when you're recovering, but how does this work in tackling? Okay, well, uh, let's run through an example real quick. So here, I have uh, Michael Turner again. Uh, I'm running through the line. I actually stumble a bit. Uh, he doesn't quite make the tackle. He doesn't quite wrap up. Now, notice, um, as I start to stumble off of this tackle, I'm not actually gonna get wrapped up in order to, to get tackled this time. I actually just get hit. So notice, guy runs in, hits me, and I fall. And he gets caught up behind the, the linebacker right. that fails he, on the tackle. He can't exactly make the tackle to get wrapped up, however, he not, because I'm already stumbling to keep my balance, he knocks me further off balance to the point where I fall down. So. And it's not, it, I mean, it's good to see that collision too, uh, you see him kind of go down. His head gets caught on the guy's leg. Absolutely. So what you're going to see is guys uh, uh, organically tackle people uh, and not just have wrap-ups every play, so it's going to be Really exciting, it's gonna add a lot of variety to, to the tackles as well. Can we see this one more time? Sure thing, let's run it at speed. And there it is, nice natural looking organic tackle. Uh, I should have scored, but whatever, you know, <laughs> happens. One thing to note is this game is still very much a work in progress. Absolutely. So all this tuning stuff, you guys have to tune this like right up until launch essentially, correct? Exactly, and once, once the game's in the kit, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a different story. So. Uh, we right. look forward to everybody playing and we look forward to seeing to everybody seeing all the improvements that we've added to this system and just enjoying it overall. So Vic, when are people gonna get their hands on it? August twenty eighth. August twenty eighth. Everybody get your hands on it. It's gonna be awesome. It's the Infinity Engine. It's gonna change the way you've played uh, forever. So there we go, folks. That was uh, directly from E3. Uh, again, that's uh, from EA's channel. That's EA's presentation. That's Victor Lugo, one of the game designers talking about the Infinity Engine. I, I do, I do want to point out something that he said right at the beginning there, is that the Infinity Engine is layered on top of their existing animation sequence, and that's what the only thing that gave me pause, is that we've seen this tried before in the past, and you don't have to look that far back, is if you, uh, for folks who've been playing this title, even for a couple of years, if you remember what they call locomotion, is that they layered that on top of the game engine, and it had some pretty awful side effects, and it's what they call, uh, uh, what's generally termed as unintended consequences. <laughs> and the unintended consequences, if you remember that, was that if your player was engaged in a tackle animation sequence, all other players got force fielded off of them. Most likely, the most common uh, thing that happened was that they got force fielded down to the ground and out of the play. And it really made any kind of play out in the flats, especially to like a Steven Jackson type player, really just like out of hand ridiculous. So th that's about the only thing that gave me pause. Uh, again, this is E. Th we're at E3, so we're in June. Remember, this game comes out. Uh, that's the other thing that uh, Victor was saying is, that, you know, this game. They switched the release date, by the way, last year. Again, giving you some perspective on it. But this game comes out end of August, and you would have to figure that there are about at the 75% point on development, and who knows when that uh, gameplay demonstration he was showing us from at one point that build was from. So, you know, say they've got a month to prepare for E3. So, you know, that's from uh, what that's what the state of the game looked like a month ago. And uh, that's a pretty familiar little practice mode situation. So, uh, you know, it's looking not too, too, too terrible. And it's all sounding quite good. And, you know, add it all up. And like I said, the only thing that gave me pause about this, the only thing that concerns me is the layering on top of the current engine. Because there are definitely some flaws uh, with the, the current engine. You can see that in the NCAA gameplay video I put out there. <laughs> Self-promotion! <laughs> Anyways, let's get into a little more goodness here because uh, there's, uh, there's another big change coming too. 
We've made a huge investment in gameplay with our, our biggest innovation to date, but it's our all new connected careers mode that will bring you closer to the NFL and to your friends. Connected careers combines the best of franchise, online franchise, and superstar, and creates one connected universe. It delivers three exciting things. Deep gameplay progression, a dynamic storyline, and social integration that connects you to your league like never before. So, uh, that was a bit of a bomb too as well, is that there's only going to be one dominant game mode now? Say what? <laughs> no doubt. Is that what they're ca calling now is connected career mode is going to, this one single career, the game mode, is going to replace the traditional franchise, superstar, and online franchise game modes. So, what is that exactly going to mean? How exactly is that going to work? Because that, that was a lot of information when you think about it with very little detail. And Cam goes on to do a little demonstration with uh, Michael Irvin that was kind of, yeah, uh, that, uh, you know, I don't know. It, you know, again, that, that was uh, Ted from the marketing department came up with a brilliant idea basically but for you know us gamers out there you know what what's the uh what's the 411 on this what's the deets you know how how exactly is this going to look or feel because they're replacing three game modes with one game mode well good thing is that they gave us even more information a little bit later in e3 so check this out all right ea sports community i'm your community manager justin duel here with madden nfl designer josh lumen uh we just revealed connected careers yes we did very exciting so it's a big announcement here. There are lots of excitement with the community, but we also have a lot of questions going on right now, Josh. Guys want to know uh, more about the mode. There's, there's a lot of confusion with guys because it is so deep. They want to know. We've, we've kind of said that there's no more offline franchise, no more online franchise, no more superstar mode. It's all connected careers. So with that, there's there's been a lot of questions. I have like 20 here from the community right now, so we'll get to them. Sounds good. Um, the first question we have is the guys want to know what does it mean to be a coach now and do you actually get to play the game? So. If you look at playing from the perspective of a coach, it's the same thing you've always had in offline franchise. So you're going to control the offense, the defense on the field, special teams, all that stuff. You're going to trade, you're going to draft, you're going to sign players, you're going to do everything you've ever had. So you're in complete control of the team as a coach. Nice. So with the coaching stuff, there have been, you know, we announced that as a coach now, you can get fired on your job, which is authentic to the NFL, and that's why we have it there. But there are some guys who, there's a guy at Operation Sports who's a real loyal Chiefs fan. All he wants to do is coach the Chiefs, so he wants to know, does he have an option to turn that off? Yeah, you definitely do. Whenever you create the league or the commissioner creates the league, you have an option to turn off being fired as a coach. So if you wanted to, you could coach for 30 years as the Chiefs head coach, never get fired. Uh, you'll be able to still meet your goals and all that kind of stuff, but uh, we do give you the flexibility to turn that off. Nice, that's a, that's a good option there. So the guys also want to know, so when you are playing as a player, what exactly do you have control over and do you control the play calling and the player? So when you're a player, um, we actually spent a lot of time working on this, trying to figure out what the most fun aspect was of being a player. Um, if you control a player, you only control yourself. You do not control anybody else on offense. You don't control anybody on defense. Let's say you're a quarterback. Um, you do call plays. And you can make adjustments like hot route and that kind of stuff. Uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, we gave you full control to play the game how you wanted to play it. So it's all up to you. Nice. So guys want to know also, so obviously we announced that we do have legends uh, in connected careers. But they want to know, so when you're in a league and you have multiple owners who want to use the legends, what are your options there? So the commissioner can uh, turn a setting on or off for legends at the beginning of the uh, league that's being created. I think the default is actually off right now. I don't know how we'll end up doing it when we ship, but um, the commissioner can determine to turn that off. And if he does, that means that anyone else that he invites to the league or joins the league cannot join as a legend. So you can completely block that out. If you turn it on, then people can join as a legend if they want to. And again, I don't want anybody thinking that the legends are these souped up 99 overall players. I think the most they're, they're going to be is maybe an 85 overall. The coaches will start off as rookie legends, so rookie versions of themselves. They won't be completely souped up with everything unlocked, that kind of stuff. So it's not like they'll break the game, but if you want to make sure that realism is taken care of, then your commissioner can turn that off. Yeah, and realism is a big important factor, but another one, as you said, is a fun factor. Um, so guys here do want to know, are you able to switch from a player to a coach to a team throughout your career? And the same user had a follow-up question around, is there a scouting combine? 
So you can definitely change from player to coach, back to player, all kinds of different positions, as many times as you want. Doesn't do anything at all. I've, had, I've seen a lot of questions this morning about people asking if they take Tim Tebow and then they retire Tim Tebow, is he gone from the league? That's not the case. So if you control Tim Tebow for a year and then you turn around and you retire Tim Tebow, you just basically quit him. He goes back into the league. He's CPU controlled. Everything's fine. Um, if you take a created player a couple years and you retire a created player, then that guy is permanently retired from the league. Good. Good detail there for the guys. Oh, by the way. Oh, yeah. By the way, there is a scouting combine. It's not a big, you know, in-game event, that kind of thing. It's just another aspect of the scouting part um, where you go into a screen and unlock information about people. But it does happen at the real time the scouting combine happens. Nice. So with the next question we had here is guys want to know, uh, this came from a specific user on Twitter, but he plays a lot of his brother. He wants to know, can I run a connected career with my brother if we both play on the same console? So this year on the same console, you can only play one person per league. Um, that's probably something we'll look at in the future, but again, it was something we wanted to do right. It requires a lot of changes to interface and that kind of stuff, so um, right now it's just one person per league. Okay, thanks Josh. Uh, so next one is, they want to know what happens when someone in your league doesn't want to play anymore. You know, there are a lot of guys who will start a franchise, drop out, and the guys don't want their franchise to die, so what have we done for that? So online dynasty, online franchise, we kind of have the same uh, sort of control. The commissioner can go into the screen that shows all the users in the league at any time and boot anybody he wants. Nice. So guys also want to know, is Connected Careers going to be an online type deal where you can compete against your friends or strictly offline? And guys that are listening to this, this is kind of a, you know, we have different fans here, different directions. I believe this one came from Facebook. So want to take it? Yeah, just very clearly, um, Connected Careers is online and offline. If you can uh, choose to play an offline career by yourself, you're certainly welcome to. You can have as many of those as you want. Uh, if you want to play an online career with your buddies, you certainly can. If you want to play an online career by yourself and take advantage of the sort of the online experience, you certainly can do that too. So we're kind of leaving the control up to you, whatever you want to do. Nice. So we do have guys that are very interested in the coaching stuff, and they want to know, can you just give them like one example of a weekly and a seasonal goal that a coach might have in connected careers? Sure. Uh, coach goals are almost all predicated around the team. So if you're talking about a weekly goal, it's like, have 600 yards of total offense or score three rushing touchdowns, that kind of thing. Uh, milestone goals would be something like win the Super Bowl or um, have 75 players while you're the head coach go to the Pro Bowl, um, that kind of thing. Season goals would be based around wins typically. So um, you'll have a minimum amount of wins that you have to reach not to get fired. That's obviously if you have that setting turned on. Um, and also you'll have to be able to reach different levels of season goals. So if you win the Super Bowl, you may get a ton of XP because of that. I've seen a couple people online, I wanted to address this real quick, asking about you know guys piling up stats and getting tons of XP by just you know throwing for 900 yards in a game. Weekly goals are one level. So if, if you have a weekly goal of throwing for 300 yards, you get 100 XP because of that, you're only gonna get that. You're not going to get a ton more XP because you did three times more than that. So uh, I, want to, I want people to understand that we're trying to be very careful with XP. We're trying to make sure that we don't overdo it, that there's no way to sort of game the system. Um, even the milestone goals for like rushing for 2,000 200, 200, yards in a season, sorry. Um, that goes more towards your legacy and it gives you XP, but we're going to be careful to not give you too much so that people are always trying to like run up the score in games and get tons of stats. Nice. Uh, the next one here is, guys, this is a short one here. They just want to know, can a group of people play as their own created guys within the connected careers, or as they were calling it, online franchise? Yeah, I mean, w one of the things that I didn't touch on uh, a lot, which is really cool, is the commissioner has the ability to determine um, who's in his league. So he can, he can say that he wants a mix of coaches and players. He can say that he only wants players. He can say that he only wants quarterbacks or only corners. So... You can play with as many created players with your buddies in the league. So you can create your own guy. Your buddy can create his own guy. It's a quarterback. You can create a wide receiver. Another guy can create a running back. You can all play as created players or coaches in the league if you want. Good. So this one here, we have a lot of guys, again, with the confusion, uh, wanting to know big offline online guys. They want to know what it, that is in currently in Madden NFL 12 online and offline franchise is in connected careers. So they give examples here such as your ratings, regression with age, player confidence, consistencies, things like that. If you could just touch on it quickly. Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely made sure we handled all that stuff. So as players get older, they definitely regress. Um, they regress if they don't meet season goals, CPU players do. Um, so sort of, you know, it's kind of the, the anti-progression. Um, 
We've got confidence, we've got consistency, all the players have traits, everything that we had last year in that regard, we've got it all covered this year. Great, and this one's another short one. The guy wants to know, are you able to control multiple teams on one profile? Uh, currently, you can only control one team on one profile. Okay, and they want to know, how many connected careers can you have at once? So the example he gave is, can I have an online league where I coach with 31 other users, and then also still be able to do one where I'm a player? Yeah, we're still trying to work on the amount of uh, sort of limited um, uh, careers that you can be as a commissioner um, and as the ones, you know, trying to figure out if we're going to have any limits of the ones you can join. Right now, we don't have any limits. It really is just based on how much we can handle on the server. Um, if, you know, we've actually tried to encourage, like, if you want to be a coach online with your friends, if you want to be in a league online with three other people and you're all quarterbacks trying to, like, compare yourselves against each other, you're certainly welcome to. If you want to play offline, you can. We're not limiting right now the amount of leagues that you can play in um, we may have to like limit it to 10 or something like that but trust me you're gonna have plenty of leagues you can be in good so this is something here that I personally was a big fan of when you first told me and, and guys are asking about it. I don't think we touched on the webcast yesterday but it's can you expand on the draft portion of connected careers and our future draft picks in future draft picks are definitely in this year's draft picks another thing that I didn't talk about a lot on the webcast we have the real draft picks. I know that's something that people have asked for for a long time. If in real life this upcoming year the Eagles have three first round picks or the Raiders don't have a pick till the seventh round, that will be reflected in connected careers. So when you start the game, the real draft picks will be there. That's that's great, definitely. And you know something else that's big for guys who are in franchises and now will be in connected careers is autopilot. So guys want to know, is there an autopilot setting? There is autopilot. So the commissioner or yourself can go into the user screen that shows all the users in the league. You can set yourself to autopilot. What that means at that point is if you're going out of town for vacation for a week or whatever is going on, um, at that point, your opponent for that week can play uh, your team controlled by the CPU. So you can come back, turn autopilot off, and go right back to playing. Nice. So next one is, you know, we talked about having coaches and we've talked about, you know, you might have a guy that's like a hot shot coach from college pop in like a Jim Harbaugh last year. And so guys want to know, do those coaches have ratings and, and does it actually matter? Or is it more of like a name type of thing? So one of the things we looked at with uh, offline franchise when we started talking about how we were going to rate coaches was, um, is it really necessary to give a coach a rating of zero to 100? Um, we started to take a look at that and, and uh, our initial reaction was no, it's not. So let's let's break coaches into groups. So we, we broke them into four levels. Level one is your, your entry level coach, um, kind of new to the league, hasn't done a whole lot. Level four is your guys like Tom Coughlin, guys who've been around for a long time, um, you know, won Super Bowls, that kind of thing. So as you're created coach, as you progress throughout your career, you'll go from being a level one to a two to three to a four. So um, we're trying to not use the zero to 100 rating scale we do for players just because we felt like there wasn't enough to kind of differentiate coaches. Nice, and, and so we have the coaches bar taken care of. Uh, another question here is if you're if you join a 32 human, uh, you know, controlled league, and each has their own team, but a guy quits and but and decides he wants to be a player instead, really, how does that work? So the easiest way to sort of handle that, if you're coaching the Chiefs and you decide to quit and come back as a player, you can come back as a player on the Chiefs, but you're not going to be able to on any other team. So um, you probably have a little more flexibility if you're in a league with like 10 teams, then you can come back and choose another team. But um, for this year, we're trying to limit it to make sure that there's only one human user per team. And I thought that was pretty important. That's why I let that run pretty long because that was a whole lot of information actually and detailed information. And the cool thing was it was uh, community com community questions too. So that's Justin, the community manager for the Madden brand, and uh, that's uh, Josh. As you saw, his title is one of the he's one of the senior developers for uh, the Madden brand title as well. So that's connected careers and a whole lot of information there for you. You can go back, check it out, and it's detailed information about all kinds of scenarios. You know, it actually sounds pretty cool it's a bit sad to me uh, to see the franchise uh, franchise game mode is going to be looks like buried at least for now um, and we'll have to see how this all plays out uh, definitely the one thing though that you heard about midway through is uh, for guys who do uh, you know who have got a uh, few friends sitting around on one console is you're only going to be able to play one connected career on one console so that's uh, that's really important information there to keep in mind. Didn't intend for this video to stretch out so long, folks, but uh, a lot of information here for you. They painted some broad strokes, as you saw when Cam came out 
and talked at the uh, actual presentation, like the keynote presentation launch there. He painted some pretty broad strokes, you know, uh, talking Infinity Engine and connected careers. And, and then, uh, you know, what I wanted to do was straight, direct from the source, give you information that they provided to you in a single source. So your good friend Dasmerich saying, you know, Finally, Lord, it's looking finally, Lord. There's a few caveats in there. It's looking not too bad. It's definitely sounding not too bad. It's a bit sad that the franchise mode is being put to bed, but we'll see. And it sounds like uh, my boy Jimmy B was uh, asking a whole bunch of questions in there because Chiefs, 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 and uh, Josh, it sounds like, is a bit of a Giants fan because how, how can you not think of the hoodie? Billy Cheech has... Uh, you know, your tier four coach. Anyways, enough thoughts, enough rambling. I kept you long enough, folks. Thank you very much for watching, and your good friend Dasper is going to hit you back real soon. See ya!